very warm welcome to you as join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. My name is Olumuiwa Matuluko, and with me on the episode is Christina Pius. Hello, viewers. We are now firmly in the last quarter of the year 2015. Yes, nine months have gone by. So much good has happened. So much of the not so good have also happened. We begin by commiserating with those who lost loved ones in Saudi Arabia, first in the incident involving the collapse of the mosque, and then, of course, the stampede. We pray that Almighty Allah will grant a general fidelity to those who died in the two incidents. We also wish to commiserate with those who lost loved ones in the bomb blasts in Yanya and Kujie on Friday, October 2nd. We ask God to grant the departed repose and to also grant quick recovery to those who were injured. Like we said earlier, so much good things have happened and so much of it not so good. Talk about the national elections, talk about the anxiety, the apprehensions that accompany the elections, the handing over, and of course, the mild turmoil in the business arena. But in spite of all this, life must go on, businesses must be run, and of course, taxes must be paid. After all, like they say, only, only two, two things, things are certain in life, debt and, and taxes. taxes. And so on today's episode of Tax Matters, we are going to be trying our best to guide you on how to fulfill your obligations as a taxpayer. What are the requirements for filing tax returns. We begin with company's income tax. Once a company is incorporated in Nigeria, it becomes a legal entity and it is treated under the Nigerian law as an artificial person separate and distinct from its shareholders. Such companies are charged to tax under the Company Income Tax Act, Cap 60 LFN 1990, as amended by the CIT Amendment Act 2007. The current rate of company's income tax in Nigeria is 30%. However, Section 40, subsection 6 and 7 of the Company's Income Tax Act provide for a lower rate of 20% for companies involved in agriculture, manufacture, export, mining and solid minerals with a turnover below 1 million naira for a period of five years from the date of commencement of business. For further explanation on this, Tax Matters spoke to Mr. Ni Yorebajo of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. What incentives do you have in a tax law for SMEs? Yeah, basically we, they have the same incentives as all companies, like capital allowances and all such incentives that normal companies have. The additional incentive they have is also a tax rate on their total profits which is 20% of every Naira of total profits. Other companies pay 30% of every Naira of total profits. But when you look at it, that law was actually promulgated many years ago. And the benchmark then for an SME, for those in trade and business was 500,000 Naira. And for those in production, mining, and agribusiness, business is 1 million Naira. And when you look at it with the value of money today, mm. it might seem that all, virtually all SMEs are cut off. I want to believe that petty traders do, do business of more than one million naira, even in today's money. So it, might, it is there, but it may, they may not be able to benefit from it. You just said something, they may not be able to benefit from it. How can, is there a way? Yeah. We, the way they can benefit is if the government abends that law by increasing the turnover threshold. So what's stopping you? Now, you know, we implement the tax laws. We don't pass the tax laws. But I know from FRS point of view, we at times do suggest, and I know on many fora it has been mentioned that the law is a bit inadequate in that respect in taking care of the interests of taxpayers. Company's income tax is collected by the Federal Inland Revenue Service. A newly incorporated company must file its tax returns within 18 months from the date of its incorporation 
or not later than six months after the end of the accounting period, whichever is earlier. In the case of a company that has been in business for more than 18 months, tax returns must be filed not more than six months after the end of the accounting year. It is mandatory that a registered company must acquire the taxpayer's identification number TIN. Shift now. I'm sorry, what I know say for my name. I don't check in no day. After all my wahala, these people still no register me. Haba, I put on 14. Thingini. What thing consenting to matter for inside this matter? What will they talk now? Eva, explain for 14. Madam, taxpayers' identification number, T, a special number for all correct taxpayers. It did compulsory. If you want to register and do business with government, without T, you not go fit to do business. I beg. Now, how much I go pay to collect this thing? Madam, I get them 14 free. Madam, take your certificate of incorporation to FIROS office, fill the form, and you go get them one time. Just like that. Mm. I beg, make her they go, make her go collect my own. You thing. are, you are. Tin na free, yo. Na for everybody. Na your correct identity. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. What does a company need to do to comply with the provisions of the Company's Income Tax Act? Self-assessment is, is, is mandatory, is the position of the law that um, from now, I mean, for some time now, mm -hmm. uh, all taxpayers have to, you know, comply with the self-assessment regulation. So it's not optional. It is not optional. They have to. Um, D2 for the issue of tax identification number. Of course, if, if, you, don't, if you don't cooperate uh, in that regard, you'll be shut off. Because you can't even transact, you know, most businesses not even beyond the tax office, like opening bank account and the rest of them. So some of them is compulsory. Mm -hmm. But for the others that are optional, I think that it, what the message is that it is clear that they stand to benefit substantially mm -hmm. from the transformation projects, you know, exercises that are going on in the service. Mm -hmm. And I see the readiness by most of them, you know, keying in. The only challenge I see, which is very glaring, is the ICT capabilities of some of them, especially companies or the taxpayers within my bracket. Uh, well, for the LTO and the MTO, yes, the ICT, you know, capabilities, presumably, uh, is high and it should be high by reason of the size of their business. But for uh, the smaller group of companies we are dealing with, even the cost of complying sometimes with some of the requirements, which were the, some of the transformation like e-filing, uh, like e-payment may be easier, but like e-filing and some of them may be burdensome, you know, to some of them. But we hope uh, as we get more and more in, into the ICT stage, it will become easier for them. But certainly, certainly, the transformation, you know, um, exercises that are going on are beneficial to all of them. Talking about capabilities, let's look at the average small business owner. The average, not all of them. Apart from the capabilities you spoke about, they also have problems with having the necessary expertise in-house. Most small business owners don't have their own accountants. If they have anything at all, maybe it's just an accounts clerk. The average Nigerian businessman does not have a lawyer on board, not necessarily even working on a day-to-day -day basis, but on retainership. You know, you don't get a doctor until you get ill and all that. So taking all that into consideration, what do you think that the average business owner can do to make you happy on your job, when you, for you to now say, this man is a good, co this company is a good corporate citizen of this country. Well, it, it, it is, it's simple, it, it very, very simple. If, if we look at the requirement of the like, statutory requirements, or you deviating a little bit even from, uh, from, from company, uh, Companies Income Tax Act, mm. let's go to the fundamental legislation. Mm which is the Companies and Allied Matters Act. It, it, what it specifies is that companies are expected to keep an average set of records. It didn't specify specifically the kinds of kind of records. So that opens a window for you know, the business operators 
to keep record, at least in a form that will enable the tax official or the revenue offices to be able to have an, a, a, a clear understanding or a clear evaluation of the sizes or the operations of the business. Mm -hmm. So that leverage is there. And with that leverage, it, it is not mandatory for any company who so cannot afford it to insist on a chartered accountant. Nothing prepares from keeping the record in a very simple format. You know, even a, 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 a small notebook could do all the recording mm -hmm. that will enable the revenue to de determine the income and the expenses at the end of the day. And to enable especially the taxpayer to be able to file his returns at the end of the day. So there is, no, there is nothing imposed on the taxpayer by way of saying, no, you must do this, you must do this. The ICT capabilities we are talking about, you know, uh, may even be a very small computer, you know, that will enable the taxpayer to record some few transactions, make it easy for them to retrieve and the rest of it. It may not be a very extensive, you know, I, 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 ICT, you know, requirement. Mm -hmm. No, that is, that is not the intention. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line of it all is that a, 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 a shrewd, intelligent taxpayer should be able to manage his affairs, arrange it in such a way that the, this burden, the management, the equipment, and the rest of them will not take a chunk of their profit out of them. They should be able to manage it. When I keep those records, I mean, you made it sound so easy. A simple notebook, yes, or maybe a minimum, big ledger, minimum, yes. Minimum. Now, when those records have been made, uh, how do I go about filing my tax return? Do I just come and give you my recordings? Oh, yes, uh, 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 you know, obviously no. Obviously no, because um, the, the provisions of the inco uh, company's income tax requires that uh, the accounts have to be audited by okay. qualified auditors. But, but then, what are the auditors going to use in the preparation of their returns? It is a set of uh, those documents we are talking about, those small records, in the minimum. We are talking about the minimum now. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there are standard books and records you know, that should be kept. But we are talking of the c category of taxpayers that, we, that fall within my, my bracket, yes. the very small yes. ones yes. that will not be able to afford the cost of keeping an extensive books, mm -hmm. you know, books and records. So, so okay, there is still, there, to there's still, has yeah. to audit, you know. Who, if it, who files my tax returns? Well, the tax returns can be filed either by the consultant or the taxpayer himself, mm -hmm. but the audited financial statement must, of course, be prepared by the auditor and certified. Any other one, you know, a process can follow directly by the taxpayer or, you know, assigned to the consultant mm -hmm. as, as, it, as, 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 as it. So, how often does a company file company's contact returns? Once in a year. Once in a year, okay. And six, six months after the accounting year end. Okay. So I cannot do it myself. I cannot just come to you. I have to use a tax consultant, or like you said. As a limited liability company, mm -hmm. you, the only extent you can do for yourself, I mean, you can file the returns by yourself, is after the preparation of the audited financial statement. Thereafter, you can do other things yourself if you so wish. But the audited financial statement must be prepared by external auditors. Yeah. In addition to complete income tax, all registered companies are expected to pay 2% of their accessible profit into the Education Tax Fund. A major feature in the Nigerian tax system is the use of withholding tax as a means of improving efficiency of tax collection. Withholding tax is an advance payment on account to be applied as credit to settle the income tax liability of the taxpayer for the year to which the income that suffered the deduction relates. Withholding tax is not a separate tax. Ministries, 
departments and agencies of government do not bear the burden of withholding tax, but merely act as agents of collection of the tax. Uh, well, it, it's true, it's true um, that most taxpayers uh, regard uh, the withholding tax as an additional, additional tax, which obviously is not. But uh, most worrisome the fact that most taxpayers regard the withholding tax as a final tax. Um, and it's very, very important that that point is mentioned uh, because certainly it is just an advance payment of tax. It is not as if the tax you know, obligations have been discharged by reason of the deduction of the withholding tax. Mm -hmm. And that is a very erroneous position that is you know, held by many taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and looking at this, actually, it's not peculiar to withholding tax. Uh, you also have it with, with VAT, especially VAT deducted at, at source, or no, not, not at source now, import VAT, for instance. When a taxpayer is importing and VAT has been deducted, uh, eventually when the goods you know, come in and uh, they are to be sold, VAT is supposed to be charged and then uh, the output and, you know, or uh, impute offsets with the resultant payment of the additional you know, VAT. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, just like withholding tax, taxpayers uh, believe that with the deductions that have been made at source, they have fully discharged their you know, responsibility in that regard, and that is, that that is, is quite true. erroneous. Mm -hmm. And that keeps them away from rendering their returns until when something somewhere uh, somehow brings them to uh, the tax offices for, for some business relationship before they get to know. Yes. Yeah, what can we Yeah, what can be this? Ah, uh, the deduction now for withholding tax. Withholding guinea. Look, if you not pay me my correct money today, hey, you not get me you now for... Well, madam, should be your company paying income tax. Yes, that one is enough load for me to carry. Why you not want to join them again? You see, withholding tax now advance payment for income tax. So, when you do some kind of job, like contract, we go remove small from them when we won't pay you. Mm. No, 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 we must pay the money to FIRS within 30 days and they will give us withholding tax credit note to take sure say you don't pay part of your income tax in advance. Eh, uh -huh, so? Now to help make the money where you go pay at the end of the year small. So, <laughs> this withholding tax won't it be like a part payment of no, no. Exactly, madam. <laughs> I beg you. Give me my check. Remember, come collect your credit note. Withholding tax, now for we own good. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. On the ease of acquiring withholding tax credit notes, taxpayers have always complained about it. It's, it's an issue. What's the way forward? Yeah, let me just be a little bit historical. When I joined the service, the practice was, if you want to claim your withholding tax credit notes, and you bring your documents to the tax office, that office will write the office that issued those documents to confirm those notes, the authenticity, because we used to see a lot of forged credit notes. But some people sat up in the land and said, look, we are not being fair to taxpayers. Why do we need to confirm something that our office had already written? Why don't we accept this thing? When they bring it, let us accept it and use it. If we now discover that, yes, the company brought forged with only tax credit notes, it's an opportunity for us to now invite the MD of that company to tell us where he got his documents, which is a better way of rendering service to the taxpayer. I think in January 2007, there was a meeting in JOS why it was unanimously decided that we should do that. And we were doing that. Even though I know in some cases there might be exuberance on the part of some officials, but that was actually the policy. Then Inla Revenue now went a step further. In the past one year or more, because now most of our operations are now automated. Okay. Like the receipting, the printing of receipts, Payments, everything is automated. So what do we do? In offices, 
we can actually see with only taxes that have been deducted and have been remitted to us by any office within FRS. So on your table, when the company comes and makes a claim, you can actually see and confirm. So what we do is that we use what we now see. So it has even reduced a lot of the a lot of the, the the backups that we had. Because we had cases of even we write with only tax credit notes and the companies that are to collect them on behalf of their customers do not come to collect them. But now they are in the system, so we use them automatically. And we are going a step forward. I want to believe that by this time next year, it is the automation that we will set off, it's that we set it off in the system itself. So the companies may not even need to claim. The system will claim it on their behalf. So what the system will be showing is what the debts that they have to pay. So we are improving constantly. We are improving constantly. In fact, I have seen cases of taxpayers who, well, let me put it this way, disappeared from the system for two or three years mm -hmm. and they came back to process their tax transactions and they were wonderfully surprised mm -hmm. that this was not happening before. We are now coming and you are telling me you can see my withholding taxes that have been deducted in another state some months ago, some years ago. We have the capacity now to see up to six years back all the withholding taxes that have been deducted. I think uh, the, the problem has really eased uh, with, um, with, the, with the system, with the transformation going on in the service now. The, if you know where we're coming from, uh, it used to be a real issue, it used to be a real problem getting withholding tax credit notes. Mm. But over the last uh, three, four years, uh, I can confidently tell you that um, uh, the delay has you know, greatly subsided. I wouldn't say it's been totally eliminated, but it has greatly subsided. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, even when these credit notes are issued, uh, maybe out of ignorance or carelessness or nonchalance, most taxpayers don't even bother. They don't even know the worth of what they have. Uh, so they don't even bother to, to con contact you know, the contractees. Mm -hmm you know, to have the credit notes collected. Mm -hmm. uh, so because of that, and maybe sometimes the contractees don't help the situation because after the collection of the credit notes, uh, they just take it to their offices and dump. It's only ta few taxpayers that know their rights that go, you know, after them asking for it and the rest of them, which shouldn't be. Um, at a point in time, uh, we we're thinking on about this on how best to do it, but I I, I see there's there's a line at the a light at the end of the tunnel uh, because we are migrating very soon to high tax, and I, I see that that problem is going to be you know dealt with you know certainly. But at the point in time, what I was trying to say is that we we we're tinkering with submitting these credits not directly to the beneficiaries, but it would have been a very uphill task mm -hmm. because. Uh, some of them cannot even be located. Some of them are portfolio companies. Yeah. Yeah, they, are, they are addresses you can't even locate. But like I said, thank God there is light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. with the high tax you know, that is coming on board. That, uh, the credit will automatically uh, you know, uh, be taken to the uh, ledgers of, uh, of the taxpayer. You spoke about the worth of what they have. Yeah. What is the worth of it with the tax credit notes? Money is cash. There's no better way to describe it as cash. This is the taxpayer's money. It's cash. It's just that they don't know. Okay. Some know, obviously some know. Mm. Majority of them know, but sometimes maybe out of ignorance or nonchalance, they don't even bother to go after it. How do I make use of it? Or them? It's simply to take it to the tax office after you are, when, along with your tax returns. That look, I have suffered this, my liability is this. This is my money I'm using to pay. It's money. And you accept it? Obviously. Absolutely, yes. There you are. Follow those easy steps and you can keep your nose dry. You will not have to fear the tax man. And of course, you'll be contributing your quota to the development of Nigeria. And talking about developing Nigeria, talking about raising revenue, the tax collectors, the tax administrators have to be comfortable 
we, the taxpayers, who go to visit them, to do business with them, must also be comfortable. We remember vividly the old tax offices, especially the Broad Street office of the FRS in Lagos in, in, in those days, yeah. you know. Mm. But in recent times, things have improved tremendously. Oh, things have improved. We look at the revenue house in Abuja, we look at all the new prototype offices all over the country, but they are not resting on their oars. Mr. Babatunde Fowler, on assumption of duty, decided to visit the offices of the FRS, located at the headquarters and around the headquarters in Wuse Zone 5. He concluded that visit by visiting, wait for it, the site of the new headquarters building of the FRS. You can imagine something bigger than what you have in Wuse Zone 5. Work is progressing at a very frenetic speed, and it is expected that that building will be ready for occupation in 48 months. What can we say? Life is going to be better for the tax administrator and for the tax payer. We want to thank you most sincerely for watching this episode of Tax Matters. We do hope that in our only two way, we have been able to further enlighten you about the workings of the Nigerian tax system. From Christina. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Have a beautiful week ahead.